hey guys who would have thought isa would have caught us on a lockdown but it is what it is and we all need to play our part but while we're here in the spirit of easter fish always comes to mind and i've got three fish fillet recipes for those of us who are actually celebrating easter this weekend or if you just want to have some killer fish recipes in your arsenal hi i'm ramon and i'm the chef in the back pocket In Jamaica, I think we're more accustomed to seeing and using whole fish, so I decided to use snapper fish fillet in order to show you some different options, and our first dish for today will be Escovich fish fillet sandwich. For fillets, you can generally get them with or without skin. For this recipe, I've decided to use without skin. For fillets like these, I like to slice them on a bias, so that's holding the knife at an angle and basically making a slice down the meat. Now, by doing this, you create a broader surface area so the fish will generally cook faster. My seasoning blend throughout the entire video is just really salt, black pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder. I really think that onion and garlic powder works magic for fish without being overpowering. Now, I like to add cornstarch to my flour as it adds an extra crisp. So this is cornstarch plus flour and I've went ahead and pre-seasoned it. After pre-seasoning my flour, I thoroughly coat my fish while dusting off the excess flour. It's not good to flour your fish too much in advance because the longer it sits is the more it begins to clump because the water is being drawn out of the fish. After coating, you'll be left with something looking like this. In a pot of hot oil at 350 degrees, I place my fish in gently. Now, safety is key, especially with hot oil, so I ensure to use a tongue to place my fish in the oil as well as drop the fish away from my body. After 45 minutes of frying, you'll be left with a golden brown crispy fish. In terms of assembly, I mean, it's pretty much a sandwich, go crazy, go wild, but I purposely didn't put mayonnaise at the base because I like to keep it as light as possible. Now, it is an Escovitch fish sandwich, so I've got Escovitch pickle. And for the creamy factor, I've got coleslaw. This is the coleslaw dressing and it's made up of mayonnaise and I've actually used the vinegar from the Escovitch pickle, some granulated sugar and some salt. Really basic recipe here, but the vinegar from the pickle, it really does a lot. The actual slaw is made up of red and white cabbage as well as shredded carrot. Then we just add our coleslaw just into it. We mix it thoroughly, incorporate, and at least let it sit down for 10 minutes. This allows for the flavors to develop while still remaining fresh and crunchy. Top it with our burger bun, and you've got an Escovitch fish sandwich. For me, this is a great lunchtime sandwich. It's great with sweet potato chips or plantain chips. Our second dish will be crispy skin pan seared snapper. One of our components for our fish today will be a tropical salsa made of diced mangoes, papaya, red pepper flakes, cilantro, lime juice, salt and pepper to taste. The sweet flavors of the fruits as well as the herbs and the red pepper flakes and lime really help to bring out and elevate the flavor of this dish. For the fish itself, we're going to score the skin. Now this helps to prevent the skin from curling. So basically what you do is pinch the skin together and with a sharp chef knife, make small incisions into the skin about quarter inch deep and about half inch apart. Scoring is another way to add great depth as well as presentation to your fish or for any meat for that matter. In terms of seasoning, it's the same seasoning from before. Salt, pepper, garlic powder and onion powder and then we coat the fish with some olive oil. When it comes to actually searing the fish, it's easier to be done in a non-stick pan or a well-seasoned cast iron skillet. It can be done in other pans but to a greater degree of difficulty. I've got some olive oil going in a non-stick pan and I'm going to allow this to reach smoking point. Now, smoke point basically refers to the level at which the oil begins to break down or the burning point. And the reason why we're bringing our oil to such a high level is because we want to develop a nice crispy skin. 
In order to make this dish successful, you're going to need something like a spatula as well as a tongue. When you start to see a steady stream of smoke rising from your pot, that's when you know it's ready. Gently place your fish away from you using your tongue, followed by your spatula. The spatula is to basically help prevent the skin from curling as well. So you keep pressing the fish down at different intervals. Now, keep repeating this for about a minute until the fish skin has set while avoid actually moving the fish. The fish will basically tell you when it's ready. You'll see a light brown color at the base, a light white color at the middle, and a light pink color at the top. After about 4 minutes, we add a tad bit of butter. Now this butter helps with the browning as well as it imparts flavor. And then we gently turn over our fish. At this point, we turn off the heat and we allow the fish to finish cooking through. After a minute, just remove from the pot and you've basically got crispy skin fish. Follow these steps and with a little practice, you'll be basically wow your guests. To further add to the class of this dish, I've lightly sauteed some kale and spinach as our base. If you needed a starch element to this dish, you could add creamy garlic mashed potatoes or a pumpkin jasmine pilaf. To close this dish, we top our wilted vegetables with our crispy thin fish and then we garnish with our salsa. And with that, we got a cleaner, more sophisticated way to eat fish fillet. Our third and final recipe will be curry coconut fish fillet. For this recipe, I'll be using skin or fish fillet and I've went ahead and seasoned it with salt, pepper, garlic powder and onion powder. In a sauteed pot over medium heat, I've added coconut oil followed by chopped garlic and ginger and scotch bonnet pepper. I've allowed this to saute for at least 30 seconds before adding in my curry powder. Now, I've always heard that you burn curry, but from a culinary standpoint, you do not burn curry because it will make your dish very bitter. What you do is lightly toast it or dissolve it in some oil and you continue to stir it. After toasting our curry, we then add in our coconut milk and dissolve the curry into the coconut milk and allow it to come to a boil. After our mixture has come to a boil, we then add in our snapper fillet away from our body. We allow the fish to cook for 30 seconds before adding in our julienne onion, bell pepper and carrots. After that, we add in some crushed allspice or pimento followed by some thyme leaves. When all our ingredients are in our pot, we then thoroughly incorporate, cover with a lid and then turn the heat to low. After 4-5 to five minutes, your fish is basically cooked through. If you find the sauce is too thick to your liking, we can thin it out with some coconut milk. After reaching the desired consistency, just remove from the heat and serve. I'm going to be eating my fish with some herb and vegetable quinoa. And with that said guys, hopefully you got some inspiration for these dishes for the Easter. As usual, if you like the contents of this video, please subscribe, like and share, hit that notification bell and I'll see you guys next time on Chef in the Back Pocket.